You know, when we're trying to diagnose an overheating condition, sometimes we may get to the point where we're questioning, is the radiator any good? Is it restricted? Here's how to use a thermal imaging technique to confirm that it is or is not. Well, the client on this uh, particular 89 Toyota pickup come in for a uh, overheating concern. It uh, overheated even at idle, you know, driving. First things first, you know, we do a pressure test on it, make sure it's sealed and not low on cooling. It wasn't. It held good pressure, so we moved on to a CO2 test to make sure it wasn't a uh, cylinder head gasket, which is pretty common in these. But at the time, it continued to pass a CO2 test. The service manual after this will tell you, you know, first things, replace the thermostat. If that doesn't fix it, then replace the water pump. If that doesn't fix it, then replace the radiator. But I can't justify being a professional and telling them that, well, first off, we need to replace the thermostat because at this point we're guessing, even based on the service manual. To be the professional, I need to know and I have an accurate answer for him to be able to tell what's going on with it. And I was kind of at a loss. I was just about ready to have to go by what the service manual said and hope I didn't have to bite my tongue on that. Uh, but luckily enough, the same day I got it in, I just. Uh, had this new tool come in as a thermal imaging camera and I was able to play around while the overheating condition was present and man this thing really saved the day. I uh, was able to actually shoot through the grill at the radiator and find that the radiator itself was not cooling. You really don't have to do a lot of disassembly for this technique. Just shoot a picture through the grill. This is the actual radiator used in this video. The way the radiator should work, you know when you're driving down the road you have air being pushed into it. And we can see here, with my hand going through the back, that the fins are clear. So we're getting air going through the radiator. There's no debris blocking it. But are we getting coolant through it? The way the radiator should work, you have hot coolant coming from the engine. It fills the top tank and it travels down. Each of these tubes returns from the bottom tank to the engine. This here is the upper tank. It's a top tank and bottom tank design radiator. The upper radiator hose is on the top left of the upper tank. And as you can see, that whole upper tank is hot. As you can see, the, when I actually measured out the temperature, the vehicle, it was almost overheating at this time. The top tank temperature was 160 degrees all the way across the top, and it was 160 degrees all the way across the bottom. And then all the way down the side of this radiator over here was also 160 degrees. But the other 90% of the cooling fins of this radiator was only 70 degrees. Well, there's almost 100 degrees difference, and the radiator is only operating on less than 10% of its ability. Uh, based on, I mean, as you can see, this is shooting through the grill, so I didn't have to do a whole lot other than just take the picture and realize, well, wait a minute, this radiator is bad. That's why it's overheating. The, the center point of this radiator is uh, roughly 70-some degrees. And it, it's not, you know, it, it is 100 degrees different than what it should be. A perfect operating radiator should be dropping temperature all the way from the top all the way to the bottom because the flow is coming in from the top and exiting the bottom. In this first image, you can see that the hot water returns from the image and fills the tank. And the only place that it shows in the tubes that it's actually going down is this one corner. The rest of the radiator is not doing any heat exchange. We're not getting any current flow because the radiator is restricted. All of the little tubes are plugged up. Okay, this is after we had already condemned it and got the approval to replace the radiator. Uh, as you can see, there's a completely different picture here. And the overheating concern is no longer present. The top tank temperature still average, you know, about 150, 160. The whole temperature here changed all the way across and that's the bottom tank there you can barely see is even warm. You can see a big difference. You can see the heat drop from the top tank to the bottom. Now in the second image you can see the same thing. The tank is hot and now all of the channels going down the radiator have heat exchange. They're hot at the top and as they drop down they get cooler and cooler and then we have cooler coolant returning to the engine for more heat exchange. Okay, this tool uh, really proved effective in, in this diagnostic. Form, uh, test. 